good. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to the Kia Hyundai channel. My name is Gabby. And I'm Charlotte. And Charlotte, we're doing something a little bit different today. That's right, we're actually back with another comparison video. It's been a while since we've done this. I think the last one we did with was the Seltos <laughs> and maybe the Kona. But today we are back with Kia and Hyundai's new smallest vehicles. It's now their smallest vehicle. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so yes, yeah, so what Charlotte was saying, as of 2023, Kia has now axed the Kia Rio, which is or was our smallest car. That leads both of these compacts up head to head mm -hmm. against each other, and it's really close, I'm not gonna lie, um, battling for the best spot on our compact list. Me and Charlotte are gonna try to be as fair as possible. I work for Kia, Charlotte works for Kia, but I honestly gotta say, this is a tight competition. A it's, very tight competition. It's pretty sweet, but we'll leave that up to you guys. Mm -hmm. Now, I will start off again by saying these cars are sisters, not, not twins. twins. <laughs> and we'll walk you through everything that sets these two apart and what makes them so, so similar. As always, we do these videos every single weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We always do a live walkthrough of either Kia or Hyundai vehicle or sometimes both. Yep. <laughs> And Charlotte, why do we do these videos? We do these videos for three different reasons. The first reason is for those of you who may be looking to purchase a new vehicle, or no, sorry, the first reason is for those of you who actually <laughs> own Kia or Hyundai vehicles. We want you to be the experts on your own cars. That's why we do these walkthroughs showing what all those crazy buttons do and offer tips and tricks. The second reason is for those of you who may be shopping for vehicles. Uh, why not consider Kia and Hyundai? They've done a lot of crazy stuff in the past couple of years, and it is, I think it will really impress you if you go and take it for a test drive and do a little bit more research on it. Absolutely. Third reason is if you live in Ontario, Ontario specifically, unfortunately. Wait, Ontario's in Canada, right? Ontario is in Canada. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to purchase a Kia or Hyundai, we want to help you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Brantford Kia, where Gabby and myself are. We also have Brantford Hyundai and Owen Sound Hyundai, and we can get you connected with them. And if you're worried about not living in Southern Ontario, don't worry, we deliver. So don't let that stop you. We'd love to help you out. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, I think we should get into the video. I think we should get into it. I'm going to tackle the Elantra, if that's all right with you guys. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna take off my Kia badge, and honestly, I was shocked. I drove the Elantra back from our Hyundai store, and I was pretty impressed. This is the Elantra Essential, which is considered our base model. And you can see it from first glance, we have full LED headlights. So your headlight unit, your daytime running lights, and your positioning lights are LEDs on the base model, something that we don't necessarily get in the Kia Forte. So win for the launcher right over there. Now things that are similar are actually what's under the hood. So I have the hood popped up on the Kia Forte, Charlotte, if you wanna pan over there. <laughs> we have a Smart Stream two liter four cylinder gasoline engine. This engine has a horsepower output of 147 with torque of 132. And that engine is shared on both of these trim levels. Again, I will clarify, this is the Essential and that is the EX. If you're looking at something like the um, Kia Forte GT or the Kia, the, the Hyundai Elantra N-Line, that's gonna give you 1.6 turbo, which again, are the same comparatively. For styling, the 2024 Elantra gets a slight refresh. You may notice, comparing to the previous years, we have almost a squished down look, and in a good way. Um, I think it actually adds a lot more of a sporty characteristic to this vehicle, something that the Forte used to excel with comparatively to the Elantra. So a lot more of an aggressive styling element, some nice character lines extending on the hood. It's hard to tell right now because um, this car is coated in water and ice, as you can tell. Our detailing budget only accounts for one vehicle, and that is the Forte today. <laughs> womp womp. But nonetheless, still a fantastic car. Something I liked, again, that they added is a completely almost flush Hyundai emblem. So it's a very nice satin or aluminum material that blends in seamlessly with the hood of the vehicle. I think the styling cues is just absolutely stunning. Even for our wheels, usually on a base compact car, you'll typically get steel wheels with a wheel cover, but we actually have alloys. These are 15 inch alloys. I think the design is quite nice and it matches quite nicely with the exterior paint color and this one is cyber gray to be exact. Similar to last year's Hyundai Elantra, we have the sharp parametric character lines extending on our vehicle's doors. Might be better if we film it from here. And again, it's coated in rain and ice. I'm very sorry this about that, This is real world. Yes, that's why these videos are live streamed. It's so real. I will pop the um, trunk. Charlotte, do you wanna grab the plate so it doesn't fall down? Yeah. Sorry. So the trunk release on this model Elantra is actually by the driver's foot area. There is not a button located over here like we have in some of the other trim levels. Or you can also do it from the key fob. 
Space-wise, there's still the same amount of space that we know and love. Ice is not included. So like we mentioned, we do have three stores. All of them can sell you cars. We do do complimentary detailing, mind you. So back here, tons of space. Under the floorboard, we have a compact spare tire. So again, something that you will not get in the Kia Forte. Great peace of mind, definitely um, good to have if you are using this vehicle as maybe a commuter car, if you have your kids driving it to and from school, it's always good to have a spare with you. Elantra badging is boldly written across the rear of the vehicle. We also have our backup camera just right above our Hyundai emblem. And then our beautiful taillight design that extends all the way across the rear end of the vehicle. I think they killed it with the styling. Charlotte, what do you think? I love the styling. Mm -hmm. uh, Hyundai always does an excellent job and they keep it consistent with their elements, exactly like what you said with the character lines. We see them on the hood. Mm -hmm. We see them extending along the body panels and to the rear too. Yes. <laughs> so, comes free car. <laughs> um, one thing I do notice is we have the addition of this black element along the um, quarter panel of the window, which we do not have in the Kia Forte. You actually have a glass element. There's also a, a lot more <laughs> chrome on the Forte, if mm -hmm. you may notice, so around your windows, where everything on the Elantra definitely has a more blacked out appearance. Uh, before I hop in, I'll have Charlotte kind of pan inside the cabin just to show you what we're looking at. Keep in mind, this is a base trim level and the Forte is still on the lower end of the trim lineup. So we're getting a cloth interior. One thing I will point out that I really like they included is the cloth itself has a beautiful design to it. So right down the very middle of the driver and passenger seats, you can see we have a nice white stripe. Charlotte, you want to show them again? Sorry. No, you're good. And then the bolstering on the seat is actually quite nice. So there's lots of detail into a base compact car seat, something that you probably don't get in other brands. And it but keeps it consistent with the exterior too. Exactly, so it's nice, sharp, sporty styling. Um, the seats themselves for driver and passenger are heated and they're heated three different levels. The only thing that I feel is truly missing in this trim level is the heated steering wheel. So you don't get a heated steering wheel in the essential trim, but nonetheless, there's tons of great features that really make it a great entry starting point on the compact lineup. I'm gonna hop in and talk a little bit about what we have and where everything is located because styling is something that really separates Kia and Hyundai. You'll notice they're very, very different in the styling department. Coming to the door, we have our typical window and door controls. So that's all, you know, seen that before. What I do like is the speaker. So this has a very premium look to it. It's a nice design. Um, no premium speakers in this trim level, but that is available. If you want Bose, you can get that in our tech package. Over here, we have our brightness adjustment. And again, something we've never had before, idle stop and go. So this is essentially gonna shut off your vehicle when you reach a stop at maybe an intersection or just stopping your vehicle. It's gonna keep everything else on. So your lights are gonna be on, your radio will be on and chances are you probably won't even feel that your vehicle shut off. Benefit of that is fuel consumption. We also have our traction control, so to turn it off, a beautiful, beautiful steering wheel. This steering wheel it is so comfy and so easy to use. Not something you think of when you think of steering wheels, but truly it makes a difference. You have your Bluetooth and voice commands on the left side, so very user-friendly, everything at the touch of a button. Then on the right side, you have your driver assistance. So right away, we have our cruise control. You'll set your speed here, pause it there, and then to the left of that, we have our steering assistance. So did you know, you don't have to go up from the base to get things like forward collision avoidance, lane keep assist, and lane follow assist. All of those are included standard on the Essential, on the Hyundai Elantra. Did Charlotte, did you know that? I did know that. Yes, but, <laughs> but that's our job. <laughs> and I don't think I talked price yet. So the price point of this one, or the MSRP, I should say, is $21,999 Canadian, before taxes and fees. Pretty nice. Charlotte, I might grab that from you real yeah, quick just to show the center screen. And then I promise you we'll take a look at the back. All right, so for our center screen, it's an eight inch touchscreen display. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is wireless. So as long as you've got Bluetooth connection on your phone, you can pair everything right over there. Use your Google Maps, Apple Maps, that kind of thing. You also have physical buttons on the side, including a favorite. So you can set that to do whatever you'd like. There are again, physical dials to change your media volume and then also to tune. Just below that, we have our AC and temperature controls. Don't mind the smudges, but we have our temperature here, fan speed, and then fan direction. You also have your heated seat controls, AC and fan, um, oh my gosh, recirculated air and fresh air. To the very bottom, this is always hard to film. It's hard to get our camera in there, but we have a USB-C on the far right. So it might look like a regular USB-C 
from the camera, but I promise it's a C. There we go. A USB in the center for software updates or any sort of connectivity you may want to do. And then a 12 volt. The gear shift, it is an IVT transmission, which stands for intelligent variable. Um, operates like a regular automatic would. And then we have our drive mode select right over here, which isn't focusing for some reason. There we go. So when I give this a push, it's going to cycle me in my menu between four different drive modes. So eco is something we don't get in the Kia Forte. Yeah, there you go. This is very different. So normal mode, eco mode, which will make your car feel a little bit sluggish, but will consume or less fuel. Sport mode will do the opposite. You'll feel a little extra oomph when you hit the gas and it will consume a bit more. And then smart mode, which adapts to what you're doing. In the very, very center, we have a handbrake and then our two cup holders. One thing I like that they added with this cup holder is this um, kind of insert that you can take out or move around and that's just going to change the depth. So if you have a shorter cup or a tall cup. And for the passenger seat, same idea. So same design elements. Both of these seats are manual. For your adjustments, you can change the height as well. You have this beautiful center piece that extends over to your air vents and then right straight through to the dash, to the steering wheel, and then ends off at the door. I will show the back seat just so we have an idea of space. <laughs> that was my heel. <laughs> uh, before I hop in again, I'll have Charlotte show the seating. So typical regular cloth seats, there is no center console. So if you do have someone sitting in the middle or if you don't have someone, um, you don't have the option of knocking it down for car seats. Didn't want to step on this because my feet are very, um, my shoes are very wet. But here is our fuel consumption. So 6.5 liters per hundred kilometers combined. Then you can see some other great dynamics on this vehicle. So the average fuel cost, $1,885 Canadian. Of course, that depends on how much you drive. All right, back here, space-wise, this seat's pretty far back and it has a bit of weird recline angle to it. I have a good amount of knee room, a decent amount of room underneath the seat. And then headroom-wise, I think the launcher does a really good job at being tall passenger friendly. Uh, the seats themselves are also quite wide, so I have lots of room around me. No rear air vents, but we do have two USB-Cs back here for charging. Oh, Charlotte, we got to switch. I can't talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are in luck because the Forte is next. All right. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that look at the Elantra, and now we get to put it head to head with Kia's now smallest vehicle, which is going to be the Forte. So I'll have Gabby just go and show the side. You can take a look at the lovely 16 inch alloy, uh, alloys we got on there. So one a tire size, a little bit bigger than the Elantra, we go up in rim size. And then as you come along, you can see that we have our mirrors here. And on this trim, you do get turn signal indicators. You also have blind spot monitoring. So what that does is you can see we have a little light here. And when your signal is on, there's someone in your blind spot that will light up and give you a beep to let you know that there is someone in your blind spot. We will come around to the front and you would have gotten a good look at the headlights before, but just in case you haven't, you can take a look at them now. You can see that we do have just regular uh, halogen headlight units, but when it comes to our daytime running lights, they are LEDs, but we do miss that full brightness of the LEDs that the Elantra offers. Gabby, of course, already talked about our engine and these cars are sisters, not twins. So you can see it here in its full glory. They share the same blood. They share the same blood. But the <laughs> Unlike Gabby and I. Yeah, the appearance, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> appearance, completely different. Mm -hmm. And this is where we really get to see a lot of the styling between the two different OEMs. Of course, uh, we don't quite have as many character lines on the Forte. Some people like that more on the Elantra, some people like it less. Uh, it just depends on the look and the style that you go for because these vehicles are incredibly similar. Oh, no release. This one, I thought it did. No. Uh, so, all right, so like the Elantra, <laughs> it does not have a trunk release. I'll grab the key because I can show you. While you're doing that, I'll talk about this. So fuel efficiency is 7.2 liters per 100 kilometers combined, a little bit of a higher average fuel cost. And largely that's due to the fact that it doesn't have idle stop and go. And what was the price that was listed on there? That way the people oh. can decide what's the better value. Let me go back. This one is $22,695. So it's a little bit more than the Elantra, but this is also one step up from the base Kia Forte. Yes. And that is a basic Elantra. So this is the EX, which is one step up, as Gabby said, from the base, the base being the LX. Mm -hmm. And there's also lots of other options depending on how much or how little comfort features that you'd like between both of these vehicles. I will say both these cars combined, you can get it so basic if you mm -hmm. want, or 
you can get the turbocharged, super fun, dual clutch transmission, like you name it. There's a four tier or an Elantra for everyone. For everyone. There's yes. a lot of variability there. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, I was able to easily open up the rear hatch with the key, which is excellent and convenient. Of course, it's always nice to have it on the hatch as well when you're back there, but I do like the addition of using the key. Fair bit of space in the back. Um, nothing that we haven't seen before. You got your mats here, cargo floor. Underneath, as Gabby mentioned, you do not get a compact spare tire. You do have a mobility kit there. And if you are unsure on how to use your mobility kit, we have done a video on that. So we'll make sure that that is linked when this video is also posted. When it comes to the safety features in this vehicle, a lot of them are going to be very comparable to the Elantra. We're still gonna have forward collision avoidance assist, we have rear cross traffic. We also have lane keep assist and lane follow assist, which Gabby showed in the Elantra. But with that being said, let's hop onto the inside. So first things first, we will take a look at the door. Uh, at a glance, you can see we have some piano black detailing, not quite as um, a premium interior as you may be thinking when compared to the Elantra. You can see we still have cloth seats with some nice white detailing in the center, so that is very similar. And both of your seats are going to be manually. Uh, you can bring them forward, you can recline them, and you can raise it as well. That's all manual. Hopping inside. Now, the one thing I will say about the Forte is I feel like um, the base Forte is they give a little bit more of a sportier style, especially when it comes to the vents. You can see we kind of have these, uh, they always remind me of what you'd see on an airplane when it comes to a jet turbine. So you're seeing a little bit more of that sportiness here in the cockpit. When it comes to comfort features, can you guess what this vehicle has that the Elantra doesn't? Oh, only the most important feature <laughs> that's available in a car. For these Canadian winters, you know it is an essential to have a heated steering wheel, which I am very happy to say that this is a lovely leather wrapped and fully heated steering wheel. Mm -hmm. So incredibly comfortable. And then behind it, of course, same as the Elantra, you're gonna see we have our media controls and then also our driving controls like lane keep assist, lane follow assist, all of that is here. And then down, you can see again, blind spot monitoring, brightness adjuster for your gauge and then also you're going to have your traction control. So that's a win for the Forte. The Elantra does not have blind spot detection so it shares the collision avoidances that kind of thing but not blind spot. Mm -hmm. so win Forte. Do you, you want to come and jump sure. in? Then again I personally drive a Forte and I drive one with this exact motor. It's rated at 7.2 liters per hundred kilometers but you can do way better. I know because I do not have a light foot and mine reads better. All right. All right. Now, one of the other big differences that we are going to have is when it comes to your actual instrument cluster. So mm -hmm. it's fully digital in the Elantra. Here we have traditional analog, which I, again, thinks add to the overall sporty touch. This is a new vehicle and it is just an accessory mode and it's also in shipping mode. So if you're wondering why is it lit up like a Christmas tree, that is why. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so there's a difference. We always have to do that disclaimer. We always have to do that disclaimer because there's always going to be someone saying something, which is totally fine. but. Uh, yeah, if you can't tell, of course, it is a regular key in the ignition, nothing too crazy. And we have, oh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> and then we also have our eight inch display. So here you can take a look at it. You can see we do, of course, have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, radio. And then if you want to take a quick look at the cycle through the different media, uh, set up manual, quiet mode, media, phone, phone projection, everything like that. There we go. Uh, you do have real buttons as well. So when it comes to volume or channel surfing, you're able to do so with the toggle, toggles. And then of course, you're gonna have your custom button set up again, more for radio, media, radio. And then in the center, you're going to have your vents. Down at the bottom, you're gonna have your toggles so you can adjust the temperature as needed, defrost, direct the temperature as you need it rear defrost, air conditioning, and you do have a wireless phone charger a too. wireless phone charger. A wireless phone charger. Mm -hmm. So that is pretty sweet. I know it can be difficult to see, but let's take a look down at the bottom in this little change compartment, I like to call it. We have a 12 volt. We also have, have a USB. And if you flip to the other side, we have another USB for fast charging. So lots of opportunities for connectivity and also for charging, whether that be in the passenger seat, whether it be a different device that you're trying to charge by a cord, you are able to do so. Mm -hmm. For comfort features, uh, you have heated seats for the passenger and the driver, your heated steering wheel, and then also your drive modes. So in this one, we only have the three drive modes, normal, sport, and smart. So sport, of course, if you wanna 
you know, affect that fuel economy in a negative way, but have a little bit more fun. Smart mode if you want to increase that fuel economy and maybe have not as spirited as a drive, mm -hmm. but either choice, can't go wrong. Uh, same with the Elantra, regular, just manual handbrake, cup holders, and then of course your center console. Mm -hmm. Now, I have not talked about my favorite feature that the Forte offers. Oh, I think I know what it is. And that would be, we do have a sunglass holder, so. It's the little things It's in the life. little things that matter, in my opinion. Yes. <laughs> if you just want to take one look, one last look at the dash, you can see uh, carrying and being consistent with that silver material, a lot more chrome on the inside, some soft touch leather, and then we can hop into the back seat. I will say something I've noticed. So just from straight up being in the Elantra a couple minutes ago to now being in the Forte, I think I much prefer the buttons being here rather than on the sides. A little bit higher. Yeah, I think it looks a little bit more put together. Mm. I think it's a bit more... I th it's more my style. But mm. again, let me know what you guys think. This We live stream so we can have discussions. So yes. So we can see your thoughts in real time. Head to the back. All right. So here in the back seat, this is probably where we're going to see the bulk of our differences mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, of course, you can see it's still cloth. We still have that same detailing that we saw in the front. But some differences is we have a cargo net. We also have rear vents. What? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> wow. Rear vents. Down at the bottom, we only have a one USB, but we do have the option for cup holders and armrest in the center seat. Mm -hmm. When it comes to seating, again, um, a lot of people have not had a problem if they are taller. Here's, for reference, what my knees would look like. I can even sit in this seat as it's significantly moved back more. Still have a fair bit of knee room, still a bit of foot room. And of course, the headroom is going to be very comparable to the Elantra. Um, of course, it's always difficult for it to show on camera, especially with the color of the headliner too. But other than that, it's a very comfortable ride. I've had taller people in a Forte. Um, and again, haven't had a problem with headroom. Mm -hmm. So, that, this is a very tough video. This is tough. So, I'm curious mm -hmm. as to what you guys think. Um, Asif says we need to tell him how tall we are to understand better how we fit in the back of the car. So I'm like 5'2 when I'm flat footed. How many inches do you think these are? Three inches? Four inches? Three inches? Two? Two inches? Two? I don't know. I don't need two. a measuring tape. <laughs> We're not that tall. We understand that. But we have Pat. I like to think I'm about 5'4 when I wear heels, I think. Yeah, okay. That's valid. Now, me and you are almost the same Yeah. Height, so around that. Um, okay. I'm out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> Gabby's still recovering. Yeah, it's been rough. Um, okay, both cars are amazing value for the money, Mark W said, and I, I have to agree. I have I, to agree. Especially when you're looking at the compact car market, there's not too, too many in it anymore, or not too, too many strong contenders. I will say Kia Forte and the Hyundai Elantra, they, they would be my go-to, whether I worked at Kia or not, Hyundai or not, it's... They offer great value. Um, how long is Gabby? What? <laughs> I'm about five foot four long. Um, sorry, I missed a fitting. Five foot longs. <laughs> I'm five foot long, foot longs. Gabby's 4'11". <laughs> sorry, I missed what happened to Gabby. Is everything well? She's here. Everything's OK. I'm good. I'm good. Still alive, but I'm barely breathing. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, is the Elantra a wolf gray type of color that Kia has? Yeah, so it's a very similar type of color. Now, Hyundai calls it cyber gray, so it's a little bit different, but I would compare it to either a wolf gray or a ghost gray. If anyone was curious, I don't think I mentioned it before, but this is just Aurora Black. It's our base color, mm -hmm, and there's no paint surcharge. Yeah, so which I'll talk about Hyundai's side of things because Hyundai also features a paint color that has no surcharge, and that's white, mm -hmm. so, which is our most popular selling color. So yeah, that's, it's that's pretty good. Um, okay, question of the day. When is the 2024 slash 2025 Santa Fe coming? It looks amazing. I want to say towards the end of this calendar year. Yeah, I want to say more so third the quarter yeah. is, what I, is kind fall. of what has been projected. Mm -hmm. And we are incredibly excited to see it. Um, are you guys knowing a lot? I mean, is it snowing a lot here? It was it earlier. It was. It's turned to rain now. Which so sucks. Now it's nice and rainy. Um, with that being said, we drove 
this car. Yep. I guess both these cars. Both these you cars. drove a Forte, I drove a Elantra in the snow. On OEMs. Yeah. No snow tires. No snow tires. And they drove great. Yep. No really problems. Nice. No, none at all. Mm hmm. Um, hi, which Elantra and Forte variant would you suggest as value for the money? What would a typical waiting period be for both? Thanks. So I do have to say when it comes to the Forte, I would definitely suggest going up to the EX rather than just going for the base trim mm -hmm. level, which is called the LX, just because this is where you're going to get things like your forward collision avoidance, your blind spot detection. Heated all, steering wheel. Yeah, seated steering wheel. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. All those safety features that I think truly make a difference. And then on top of that, the inclusion of actual alloy wheels rather than steel or wheel covered steel leaves mm -hmm. make a difference too. Now, if you were looking at the Elantra side of things, I think the Essential gets just about everything I could ask for with one mm -hmm. trim level. So the base for the Elantra. And matches. I think when you talk about the Forte, it's not necessarily about getting the cheapest one. It's about getting the one that is the best value for yeah. your money, which we really think that this one is. Because yeah. even if you're buying the cheapest of any vehicle, you're still spending a good amount of money. Yep. You want to make sure that money that you're spending isn't something you're regretting a year down the road. And you're like, wow, I really wish I just... I wish I had this. Yeah. Yeah. Which... I'm a big believer in that. I Which hate when I don't have ev something. Every time I drive a vehicle that doesn't have a heated steering wheel, I'm like, oh. You wince a little bit, right? But um, I do think the Elantra comes very well equipped in space. I do think the Forte is worth going up a trim. Um, I got the SX Forte. I wish we still made yeah. the SX Forte. I guess we still do. It's just not called that mm -hmm. anymore, but great car. Um, who's better, the Tucson 2023 or the Tucson 2024? So I know in other markets, the 2024 Tucson is redesigned, it's mm -hmm. updated. Ours is not, so either or. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter for us. But I will say there has been some changes. For example, the um, N-Line is now a hybrid, so you still have that great performance that the turbocharged engine gives you, but it's efficient performance, so you get a little bit better miles per gallon or liters per hundred kilometers. Oh boy. Did either of y'all catch the Hyundai Eleven yesterday? I'm sorry, no. Joseph, can you explain that, please? <laughs> please. I can always count on Joseph to just yes. give us the info. Thank you, by the way. Um, let's see. Here in South America, it's really hot. Beaches are really crowded. Oh, yeah. We get our, that. Our problem beaches here are crowded too. too. Yeah. <laughs> Super crowded. Great beach day out today. Yeah. Um, I have a 2022 Palisade and a 24 Tucson. No problems. Great cars. They, awesome. they are great cars. There you go. There's from a consumer. Mm -hmm. um, I bought a K5 a while ago and regret not getting the sunroof package, but so glad I got the all-wheel drive with the heated steering yeah. wheel. <laughs> heated steering wheel is a must in Chicago. Absolutely. It yeah. gets so cold. Sunroof is, again, it's something that I wish was bigger in my car, but again, I'm still, I'm very happy with everything else. Um, I'm glad you were able to get a K5. Yeah. But I guess we're in the States. There's tons of them there. Nothing yeah. here. Here's a good question. Mm -hmm. Do you two worry less about all-wheel drive less where you live? I'm in New York City. I live in an area that is in the past, didn't get much, didn't get snow removal much, but now it does. I worry less about having all-wheel drive. I have a hot take on this. Oh, go for it. I've never had all-wheel drive in any of my cars. I've only ever driven front-wheel drive sedans, and I'm yeah. on my third front-wheel drive sedan. Do you put snows on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I do put snow tires on my car. I'm a big believer in snows, but I've never had any like scary experiences. I've never lost control. And you guys know me, you know, I don't, mm -hmm. I'm not a slow driver, um, but I like to think I'm a good one. I, I don't know. I mean, some people do prefer the peace of mind that comes with all-wheel drive, but I've never been in a situation where I doubted my front-wheel drive mm. car. There you go. Yeah. I, more often than not, I'm usually driving an SUV, so I typically have all-wheel drive, but I've run it winters where I haven't put snows on it and I mm -hmm. haven't had a problem as far as that. Also, where I live, I live on a very narrow street where people park on the street and oh. snow removal, so I get a good hump at the edge of my driveway. Yeah. So sometimes it's nice having that little extra push out of the driveway. Yeah. See, in a situation like that, I can see where yeah. having a slow car And a lot of that is just location-based. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it truly depends where you live and what your driving's like. Yeah. So many people um, don't go to work anymore. They work from home. Yeah. So I in think that case, do. who cares? <laughs> I, think you, I think you can work with whatever you get. Yeah. Um, what about the 30 minute mark? Oh boy, that was quick. Yeah, I guess I when we're comparing two cars. So what to talk about. <laughs> with that being said, I think we should probably end off today's video. Yes. And do we have some cool, exciting news? 
what I, I don't know if we're on the same wavelength with this, but I think so. You go in. If uh, it's different, I'll go after. <laughs> uh, if you guys were unaware, we were running a giveaway that ended uh, yesterday. We are that is currently closed. We are working on compiling all of the entries and drawing out our winners, and we will have that announced for you guys this week. We'll be messaging people on Instagram from the Brantford Kia account. Mm -hmm. Um, that was what I was going to say. It was? Oh, yes. Yeah. We're just so in sync. Sisters, <laughs> twins, twins, I don't know. Uh, let us know which car you prefer, which car you think offers better value. Also, tell us what you like or maybe mm -hmm. what you don't like. We love to hear your guys' thoughts. We will see you hopefully tomorrow with an exciting Kia vehicle. Very exciting a Kia very, vehicle. very, very exciting Kia vehicle. A very Eve sighting Kia vehicle. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then one more thing I want to say before we end off today's video is... Stay tuned for 6 p.m. today. We yep. have a very short but very exciting video being posted. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. For now. <laughs>